All right, everyone. I hope everyone had a chance to get some food and some refreshments. We have some water in the back. We have some wonderful sandwiches. We have bathrooms. I want to make a quick announcement. This is very important. You all want to know this. We're going to give you plenty of time to speak about your issues with your houses. We're here all night. No, not really all night. But we're here as long as you need to be here to get your information uh, told to the wonderful people at Rain Ready. I want to first, though, welcome you on behalf of Mayor Riley Rogers uh, of the Village of Dalton. This is very important to him. In fact, maybe I think last week after we had serious rains, Mayor Rogers was with the Chief of Staff, Ms. Elizabeth Scott, and they walked along some of the areas that have uh, serious flooding problems. And uh, this is something, again, that we meet regularly about. This is something that is very important to him. He wants to find short-term, medium-range, and long-term solutions to these flooding problems. So I'm really glad that you all came, and he wants to definitely thank you all for making, uh, taking some time out of your uh, Thursday evening. I know there are many other places that you could have been and many other things that you undoubtedly needed to do, but we're glad that you took some time out to uh, spend some time with us. Restrooms. If you need to go to the restroom, you can go one of two ways. You can go around here, down these stairs. There's a public restroom. You can go through the, down these stairs or down those stairs and you'll see the arrows pointing to where it is, okay? Or grab somebody and they'll take you down there. But once you go downstairs, it's pretty easy to find it, all right? Uh, so unless there are any other questions, I'd like to make sure to uh, turn it over to Ms. Rebecca Raines. This is someone I've had the awesome opportunity to work with on several occasions. Uh, you know, you need people who are committed to this issue of flooding and uh, rain ready and showing us uh, creative things to do with your rainwater and things of that nature. I always say that. but uh, So please give uh, Rebecca Raines a warm round of applause. Thank you for coming. Thank you. It has been his awesome opportunity. Um, I want to just welcome you all and thank you for coming, Mo. I'm going to give you this for my checker clicker. Um, I want to welcome you all to the Dalton Community Meeting. Okay. Um, and I want to say I see that we are sitting at our different tables here, so we're going to have to do a little bit of moving around when we get started. I'm excited to see so many people are here. I know that people had some drastic flooding um, last week. So that is why we came out to make sure that we can speak about that. Um, you want to go? So we're going to start off. We've already done our mingling and gathering our food. Our next thing is this is the beginning of our presentation where we're going to tell you some of the things that we learned. And then we're going to have a table discussion with the facilitators and scribes. Please raise their hand or stand up. Okay, these are your facilitators and your scribes that are going to help guide you along the path of finding out what's going on in Dalton and helping you understand the solutions of how we're going to fix those. That's going to be our small group discussions. We made it green because it's the most important. That means everybody who's not at a table, I know the tables are kind of small and little tight, but once we're done eating, which you'll be doing during the presentation, we'll be able to kind of squeeze in together so that you can point and make your point, get your point across, okay? It's like pun, is that what it is, what, what? Okay, and then we're gonna have a group report out, and then we're going to um, have a little mingle afterwards where you can grab a tree. We have oak trees from MWRD. They so graciously brought us trees, and you're gonna find out why you want a tree. We have yard signs, um, which you can see here on the podiums that you should and can take. And we also, um, have some other resources to tell you how you can help yourself, some DIY um, workshops and tools on paper, okay? You're good at that, Mo. Um, so now we're just gonna have a little overview about what is Rain Ready, okay? CNT, the Center for Neighborhood Technology, is a nonprofit that has been working for about 40 years to try to fix urban issues. So we find out what's go wrong in a city and a problem, and then we come up and we find a solution, or we try to find a solution to that problem. Call ourselves a think and do tank. Okay, so one of our main issues now is flooding. So because of flooding, we started the initiative called Rain Ready. And that's all we focus on is flooding and urban flooding, and we'll talk about the difference between those two things a little bit later. And so that's who we are and why we're here. We've been funded by Cook County to work in our six communities to do this with you. 
this um, fine lady right here, his name is Lori Molly, correct me. Lori Burns, a little nervous. Lori Burns, she got a little project. Our first community was in Chatham, which is a neighborhood in Chicago, and Melothian. That's where we do that first two projects is Rain Ready. And she came and got the home program. So we have a home resilience program. So those surveys that you're completing that some people haven't completed yet is your entryway into the home resilience program. And we have Sandra here. Sandra, will you raise your hand? No? Yes? Yes. Sandra is going to be at the resource table a little while later to talk more about that if you have questions. But that is the entryway into the Home Resilience Program so that you can be like Lori. As you can see here, Lori has a rain garden in front of her house. She had rain gardens. She's had a bunch of other things done to her house to stop her flooding, and she has been dry for the past three years. So sometimes we know what we're talking about, okay? And so the last thing I want to talk about before I hand it over is whose fault is it? Whose fault is it that I'm flooding? Sometimes you like to play the blame game and say, oh, if the municipality just did their job and fixed the sewers, I would be dry. But what we're learning about is we're called Rain Ready Community, which means that we look over the entire area, the parks, the houses, the homes, everything is important to us. And that's because we know that rain, water does not have any boundaries. It will go wherever. It has the power to come up. And so it's not just necessarily that if we build a sewer that is so big and absorbs all the water, takes all the water in, and our problems will be fixed. We actually know about a community where they did that and they're still flooding. So what we're saying is that we all have to work together. We all have to do our part in order to keep ourselves dry. That might be a rain garden on your house. It might be a sewer. We're going to talk about it today and find out. So now I'm going to hand you all over to our brain, Curtis. Clap for him, please. He likes clapping. And he's going to explain the rest of the planning process and all the research that he's done, OK? Thank you. That we've done. Definitely not just me. There's, as you can see in the blue shirts, there's quite a team working on this. So, um, And we're also here because we have some expertise in stormwater, but you are the experts in your community and where the problem is and what types of solutions could actually work, which is why it's so important. And we're so happy that you all came out tonight. Um, so as Rebecca said, uh, my name is Curtis Wittick. I'm an associate with Rain Ready, and uh, I'm going to give us a quick little snapshot of what we've been learning through this process. <laughs> Same slide. Uh, so, so why are we here? Um, I think it's kind of obvious at this point that flooding is what brings us to the table. And um, over the years, Rain Ready has learned that flooding in communities across Chicagoland is a chronic issue. It's a frustrating issue. It's stressful. Whether you have serious flooding coming from, say, the, the little Calumet River that overflows its banks, or you just have seepage into your basement or street ponding that causes you to move your car, it's frustrating and it's a nuisance. And it, it's something that deserves our attention. Um, so some of you may have come out last year or been in a similar type meeting where Cook County was putting together an application for what was called the National Disaster Resilience Competition. This effort is building on that work that was done last year where we've kind of identified what some of the challenges are in Dalton and some possible solutions. We apply, or Cook County applied for a federal grant to get money to do that work and we didn't get it. But Cook County remains whoa, uh, committed to still working through solutions through Rain Ready, and that's why we're here today. Um, so uh, we have been contracted through Cook County to lead a one-year planning process, which we're in the midst of. And the objective of this planning process is to understand where it's flooding, what type of flooding is happening, and understand some cost-effective solutions that not only address that flooding problem, but do so in a way that provides broader community benefits. So shown up here on the slide, and you're going to see more little renderings like this, but things like planting trees, which capture stormwater or slow stormwater, but they also shade the sidewalks and cool our communities, which is a great thing on a day like today. You know, um, So cools the neighborhoods. Um, right here is something we're going to talk about. It's a bioswale, which is more or less a ditch that's with na native plants in it that capture stormwater, that can beautify neighborhoods. Um, 
little bump outs that create more walkable downtown areas. So these are the types of things that can address flooding and also provide other benefits at the same time. Uh, slide. So uh, this is just an overview map of where we're working. We're working in six communities that, um, from Robbins, Blue Island, Calumet Park, Riverdale, Dalton, and Calumet City. Um, and uh, CNT did some research on flood insurance claims. So between 2007 and 2011, there are over 4,000 uh, claims made and over $10.5 million were paid out in damages in Dalton alone. So that just gives some context to the severity of this problem. And this doesn't even include the massive storms that happened in April 2013. So, you know, when you think of flooding, um, you know, usually when I, I tell people I work on flooding issues, like, oh, they think of C Hurricane Katrina or Hurricane Sandy or these hurricanes. But we've been learning that you don't have to have a hurricane to have uh, problems with flooding in communities. Uh, slide. So uh, don't don't worry about the specifics here, but this is this slide is just showing that this is a one-year planning process that we're doing in three phases. So phase one, we're just about wrapping up, and this is where we went out and met with uh, your municipal staff. We collected information and data and maps from the MWRD and other uh, agencies to understand what are what is the baseline or what, what is, to get an understanding of where the risk is and some possible opportunities. Phase two, we're calling solution mapping, which is what we're going to do at the table um, to begin to understand what types of solutions can work and where. And then in phase three, we're going to take this information, package it into a plan, which we could then leverage to hopefully get funding to do these projects. Um, but not our goal is not just to leave with a plan document, but to, through this process, um, equip all of you with resources that you could put into action right now on your home. So uh, things that you could do on your property to reduce your flooding risk. Um, so really to equip communities throughout the process and not just collect information and make a plan document. Okay, slide. So uh, before we jump into our table mapping exercises, I'm just gonna give a, a overview of what we've been learning. So while it is flooding and a problem that brings us to the table today, we're approaching this through the lens that in order to address this problem, we need to build on and recognize the strengths that are already here in Dalton, whether it's the schools or the park system or the uh, existing industrial assets that are an economic driver, commercial corridors that have businesses and that have the potential to be expanded on. Like these are, these are the strengths that, that we need to build on and also we need to uh, address flooding in a way that um, promotes your community's goals. You know, flooding is a challenge, but it's not the only issue that people might be concerned about, right? So, for example, um, you know, there there's ways to install what we're calling green infrastructure in a schoolyard, which creates more outdoor recreation opportunities for kids, as well as more learning areas. So. Stormwater management can be connected to education opportunities for kids. Um, creating more park spaces can create spaces for people and communities to come together for uh, community events. You know, so we want to connect flooding to other things that get people excited. Uh, slide. Okay, so flooding. Uh, I'm going to walk through a, a few slides here, kind of showing our evolving understanding of flood flooding. Now, traditionally, we understood flooding in terms of rivers overflowing their banks. So when there's a big storm, the Little Calumet River, you, you'll see it rise, and eventually, if it keeps raining, it could sprawl out into the surrounding neighborhoods. That's called riverine flooding. And for a long time, that's how we understood flooding. But uh, CNT and other organizations, and nationally, we've been doing research and to understand that you could be outside of this area here, which is called the floodplain, and still experience flooding. So that could be uh, basement backups, seepage, pooling in your streets, and we call all of that flooding. So next slide. So what's shown here 
is information we've collected through meeting with your munici municipal staff and talking with the MWRD that there are these flooding problem areas, places where streets might, uh, you might see pooling in streets or basement backups. Uh, maybe some issues with runoff from uh, an industrial site. Um, so this is what we're calling urban flooding. And one more slide here. So, and if you haven't done so already, please do, but this is information from the survey. So what we did here is for the survey responses we got back where people said, yes, I experienced flooding, we mapped that and then we um, showed the block where that happened so that we're not showing an individual point because we're trying to protect the um, privacy of the survey respondents. But what you see here is that we're even learning of other areas that are flooding based on the survey responses. So the idea is to layer these layers of information to give us a complete understanding or as complete of an understanding of where flooding is happening. And as we mentioned uh, earlier, last year there was this National Disaster Resilience Competition and they identified two project areas up here in the Needles Park and the south, uh, this is this area over here I think, um, where green streets were proposed. Down here in southwestern area, there is, uh, there's a kind of a vacant site here that could be redeveloped in how into housing that was proposed over here. Um, so we, we have that information, but we also want to look into areas that were not considered as part of the NDRC, such as down here where we know there's issues with riverine and possibly other, um, other overland flooding issues. So uh, just here's a few statistics from our survey. Um, we probably got another 40 surveys tonight, hopefully, but we had 43 responses, and 63% of the respondents said, yes, I experienced flooding. 26 says, no, I haven't. Um, but this is interesting because the people who filled out a survey and said, no, I don't experience flooding, they it was, they knew that it was a community issue, so they still filled out the survey about flooding. So that's still indicative that like, it's kind of known community-wide that this is an important issue. And then 11% said, I don't experience flooding anymore. Um, so, which is also interesting because if you've experienced flooding and then you don't, we wanna know what happened. Did you do something on your property? Was your sewer cleared out, which created more room for the water to go? Stuff like that. So this, the survey is very helpful for us to understand how to address the problem. Uh, next slide. Um, so how, how does water enter your property? Um, as I kind of walked through already, there's different types of flooding. Again, so there could be overbank flooding from the Little Calumet River. There could be basement backup, or sometimes we've heard s horror stories of water and sewage shooting up through drains or through a toilet. That has happened. Seepage, um, if your yard pools and it pools next to your house, that water can seep into cracks through your foundation. Uh, this is pretty common as well, street pooling, where you have to move your car, or we've heard cases in Dalton of the water being as deep as two to three feet. Um, which could also cause issues for traffic or emergency vehicles. Um, the most common uh, types of flooding we heard about in Dalton were seepage and basement backup. Okay, next slide. So why, why does it flood? Like what causes this issue? So uh, we, we've kind of broke it down and broken it down into four key factors. One is increased precipitation. With climate change, storms are getting more intense. More rain is falling in a shorter duration and, and quicker, which overwhelms our sewer infrastructure. So when the infrastructure was built, it wasn't designed to handle the storms and the volume of water that they're getting right now. If you go to uh, slide. Um, don't get bogged down with the data or whatnot, but this just shows annual precipitation from 1920 to 2020 um, projected out, and as you see, you see this upward trend. Um, this is, and this is expected to continue. So we're gonna get more rain. Um, which is, a, a, in a way, a good thing because some areas are very dry in a drought, but it's, it's good if we could figure out how to manage that water, right? You know, water is a life-giving resource when we manage it, right? Okay, next slide. Um, increased impervious surfaces. So over time, Dalton, like most of Chicagoland, has been built out 
So uh, let's scroll through a few slides here. Um, the Army Corps, who's our partners, helped us get these maps, which are really cool. So what you see here is the current boundary of Dalton. Here's an, a map from 1892 showing where the early settlements were in Dalton. And you can see, and we know from looking at pre-settlement maps that most of Dalton were various types of wetlands, some forest, there's an early timbering industry, um, some agricultural land, but the idea is like it was mostly open space. And when water would fall on open space, it would sink into the soil slowly and make its way to, to the rivers. But over time, as land is developed uh, into roads, parking lots, roofs, those become impervious surfaces. And when the water hits that, it turns into runoff that has to be ma managed. Um, so if, let's scroll to the next slide. So here's Dalton, 1938. Sorry if it's a little hard to see with the lighting, but you see uh, some more development. You begin to see the railroad corridors, but you still see, for example, here's the Needles Park area in that neighborhood, still mostly open space. Um, next slide. Dalton in 1977. So you know after the World War II, there is quite a lot of new housing development that happened and created a lot of impervious surfaces. I mean, and th these are homes and communities, but it, 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 it created a uh, water management challenge. And then Dalton today is the next slide. All right, okay, so here we are today in Dalton in, in 2016. So more impervious surfaces means more stormwater we have to manage. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Aging stormwater infrastructure. So not only were, was this, the infrastructure not designed to handle the storms that we're getting, but it gets old. Infrastructure, like everything, it degrades and it needs maintenance and sometimes it needs to be replaced and that's extremely expensive. Um, actually, can you, we have a, a slide. This is just an image showing a catch basin that's kind of beginning to erode. Um, and lots of times we go and work in communities and say we, we just need to replace the sewers or we need bigger sewers and in some cases that might be the most cost-effective solution but in other cases it's not it's extremely expensive and honestly we can't build a big enough sewer to handle the the water that we're getting so what we're discovering is that we need to combine what's called gray infrastructure improvements so like the gray stuff, the, the sewers and the gutters along the side of the roads, the catch basins, we need to maintain and improve those, but we also need to keep water out of them to begin with. And that's where the green infrastructure comes in. So we're trying to figure out what's the right balance between gray and green infrastructure. Um, essentially, we need to capture water where it falls so we keep it out of the sewer network. Okay, next slide. And then lastly, uh, Dalton is very flat. I mean, we're in Illinois, Chicagoland is very flat, but Dalton is very, very flat, actually. So um, next slide will show, a, it's a topographic map, but really there's just a matter of a few feet difference. Not, um, the, the colors might not be that clear, but it's just very flat. And water, water flows downhill, and if you don't have a gradient, that water doesn't flow. And so it just sits there. Right, so these yeah. these factors. We have a lot of impervious surfaces. We have uh, degraded infrastructure in some places. Um, we have bigger storms, and we have a flat topography. So that's that creates a challenge when we want to manage water. Okay, so what can we do about it? And that's that's where we want to get. And that's what I was saying about combining green and gray solutions. Um, and that's why we're here. It's because we want to learn from you what you could imagine in your community, where you would like to see that, or maybe where you wouldn't like to see that, um, certain types of solutions. And I'm gonna run through a few of things that you can do at your home and in your neighborhood. And so part of the table exercise is to start mapping that out. So yeah, slide please. So what can we do at our home? Uh, things like disconnecting your downspout, um, which Actually, in, in Dalton, I think they're already, the downspouts run off onto your yard or onto your um, uh, driveway, thank you. But if we could reroute that water into a rain garden or just a native planting area or some type of garden, that will slow and it will take water out of the, your local sewer system and capture it in that rain garden. Um, so rain gardens, like diverting downspouts into a rain garden can help. 
uh, capturing water in rain barrels and cisterns. Um, there's a rain barrel out there, if you want an example, and um, um, that's a rain barrel. Um, rain barrels, so they don't capture that much water. So that's why I have cisterns here, because they capture quite a bit more. Um, but these are important because um, for water conservation. Another thing, we're going to get more intense storms, but in between those storms, it's going to be dry. And so if you capture that rainwater, this is more of a water conservation uh, technique. Um, overhead sewers and backflow preventers. So when there is a big storm and your sewer network is full, this is a way to protect your house. Um, and before you even do this, uh, televising and rotting your lateral line to understand if it is collapsed or if there's roots going into it. It's important to understand your problem. Like that's like the first thing. So if you televise and rod your lateral line, that's like the first step to understanding your problem. Um, and then here, pervious pavement again. Uh, there's an example over there, so it might be hard to see, but there's different types of pavement that allow water to infiltrate through it. So that's another way to um, capture water where it falls. Okay, next slide. Um, this is something that is uh, being done more and more in communities in the area as well as throughout Chicago. Um, the idea is green alleys. Again, it's a type of por uh, in a per sorry, porous pavement. Um, they could be like paver bricks and the water infiltrates through the cracks in the bricks. Again, this creates um, or removes the runoff from the alley. So green alleys, it's a way to capture water and also improve the condition of your alleys, which is always a good thing when you can get the trucks through there or, um, or your own cars, you know. So uh, next slide. So this is a rendering that was actually drawn and proposed for the neighborhood uh, around Needles, just south of Needles Park. Uh, there are a few streets that um, have pretty minimal stormwater infrastructure on the streets. So this is one way to create that. Uh, the idea is rainwater would run off through, these are called curb cuts. So the curb would come down and allow water to go into the area called the parkway, or uh, different communities call them different things, parkway, subway, I'm not sure what they're called, parkways, okay. So the water would flow into the parkway into these uh, rain gardens or bioswales. Again, here's some pervious pavement underneath cars. So um, cars aren't sitting in pools of water. Um, and all together, this could be called a green street. Uh, next slide. Um, here are some things that can be done in a downtown area. Um, you've seen this slide before, but again, tr you could plant trees, bioswales, bike lanes um, to move not only manage stormwater, but if you're going to be doing work on the road, might as well create some bike lanes to allow people to move around in a more active, healthy way. Um, um, it, so th that's these can be combined. A as I mentioned, we do want to enhance and maintain our existing stormwater infrastructure, so that's important. Um, bump outs are things that kind of slow traffic and create a more walkable f um, environment for people to walk in. Oh, sorry. That was redundant, but um, so if you're trying to create a commercial district that that feels nice, and you want people walking in and out of shops, when there's traffic zooming by, that that's tough to uh, create like a walkable commercial district sometimes. Um, okay, next slide. Um, this is f uh, another type of commercial area with more um, larger stores, but you can manage water underneath those parking lots which do generate a lot of rainwater. If there's existing vacant land, in some cases that land can be turned into a restored wetland that handles a lot of water, and that can be combined with um, trails or park amenities, so we can create outdoor recreational space. Again, uh, we're kind of really honing or pushing this tree planting thing, but <laughs> trees are great. They do a lot of stuff. Um, too bad we don't have someone from the Morton Arboretum here, but those don't look like much, but those are tree saplings, and they, they're important, the oak saplings, which is um, Chicago land has some of the, f like, our oak savannas are really important, so we're trying to re restore those. Um, okay, uh, commercial areas, next slide. So, um, 
I think my, my time is up, which is good, So because the, the important part is getting to these table exercises. So what we're going to do now is transition to the tables here. If you uh, want to grab a, a drink or another snack, please do so, or use the restrooms downstairs. Um, and what we're going to do is, uh, is three, well, kind of two exercises. One is to complete the risk map. So like I mentioned earlier, we need to know where the problem is in order to address it. So if you haven't taken the survey or if you're not represented on that map, we want to make sure we know where flooding is happening. The second thing is imagining solutions. So we have some zoomed in maps that are a little closer and you can map like, oh, I could, you know, maybe we could do some rain gardens here or there's a church right here that we could do a, a, a rain garden. And then throughout, we're going to be capturing some broader community strengths and concerns. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to the table facilitators, and I'll be coming up to um, uh, push us along in terms of time. All right, thank you. And just a note that we did have pictures from Dalton here. It's one of our your famous Dalton residents. You have another one that you'll be reading her story in your snapshot. So just know we're all Dalton out around here, okay? And if you are not sitting at a table, if you are at a table, if you could throw your trash out and make some room for other people to join you in so that we can all kind of squeeze in together, facilitators will need a seat, but uh, us scribes will probably need to stand and walk around those tables. For that, but maybe this will help. Hold it down. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, thank you. All right. So you folks, um, downwards, get numbers get bigger as you go south, and then up here, 146. All right? So back down here. So I know a lot of you are. And you guys all want to point out, too. I think you need to pick up one of these. Right away, which would be a street. Red would be indoor flooding, which would be your, your house. So, uh, or a building, structural flooding, right? And uh, green will be for a little and bit then of we can, And we want to mark it up. So we, you know, we can draw, you know, if you want to put the address, you can draw a line to it. And, I'm out here. So we'll be able to see. Yeah, right over here. The street. Like that intersection. You know, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming out today. Uh, Rain Ready did not expect this type of crowd. Actually, um, you know, um, I'm not sure if the total message got out, but apparently there's a lot of interest here in regards to the flooding. We have. Uh, some areas that flood more than others. This year, no, was it last year, Elizabeth? Uh, we went to, we went to um, the Thornton Reservoir. No, I'm talking about the Thornton Reservoir. Opened up last year as part of the Deep Tunnel Project. And believe it or not, that has really helped us in giving us some relief in regards to the flooding here in the village. Last week when we had that heavy storm, um, it usually would take approximately two days for that, all that water to recede in some areas. The following day, a lot of those areas that used to flood and it would take two days was gone in one day. And opening up the, uh, the Thorn Reservoir deep tunnel project that occurred, um, it has given some relief to all of the South Suburban communities um, in Thornton Township. I'm not sure if everyone knows where that reservoir is. If you've ever traveled over the rail, the um, tollway, it's the quarry, the rock quarry. For a number of years, yeah, rock quarry. It can hold, I think it was five billion gallons. But for a number of years, they blasted there every day at 2.30. And some of the people that lived around the area could actually feel the rumbles from the blasting. But at this point, they still are taking rock out of there, but it's used as a reservoir uh, that, is, that has connected all these communities. You know, I'm glad that Rain Ready is here, Rebecca's here, and all of the other uh, components of Rain Ready. They came out last week. We took a tour of the village. I told them about some of the areas that I, I knew, in fact, was, was uh, flooding. And um, I explained also that sometimes insurance companies' definition of flooding is different than your definition of flooding. And if you have insurance, and I've experienced this, where 
I had water come up in my basement for about five feet of water. And for a number of years, I didn't get any water. Uh, and this is at my a former residence that, I, uh, residence that I had. And the insurance company came out, and I thought I was covered. And they said, this is not flooding. This is sewer back up. <laughs> so thanks, but no thanks. But I was able to get some assistance from FEMA because they, they uh, designated that area as a disaster area. So one of the things that we like to do is keep the village informed, and that's why Rain Ready is here. Rain Ready is working with Cook County. Cook County has came to the village of Dalton, make, made their assessments, and, and part of that assessment is bringing Rain Ready here. So hopefully you'll get some good informative information tonight that will help you, and we will continue to try to alleviate as much flooding as we can here in the village. Um, our new VAC that we, that we purchased about two years ago is out cleaning a lot of the sewers. But we have a number of trees in the, in the village, and um, some of those trees have grown so big and the roots are so long, they have grown toward some of the houses into the pipes, and it has caused some blockage and may um, cause you to have some backup. One thing that you may want to do is that there's a product out there, I believe it's named Rain-X. Maybe, no, it's not Rain-X. I don't know what it is. Red-X. Red-X. Red-X, I'm sorry. Oh, my two minutes up. Okay. Red-X. And you may want to put that down your toilet and down your bathtub and leave it sit overnight and it actually goes out and kills the roots. Now, um, and I, I, I do it every three months. Um, and believe it or not, I haven't had a sewer back up. Although I live by myself, uh, with some company on occasion. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but it really helps. Thank you all for coming tonight. I hope, I hope the information they provide tonight helps you all. All right. Um, so that was the end of our risk. Yeah, give the mayor a hand. Um, he'll be available for photos later. So that was the end of our risk map part. Now we're going to get on to the very fun part. Curtis, you want to explain it or you want me to do it? I'm going to flip up. So this is the imagining solutions part, um, the part that Curtis explained a little earlier when he was showing all those lovely pictures. You have some worksheets that your facilitators are going to give to you that are explaining these a little bit better. Now we want you to imagine where solutions can go. And this is the best part. We're going to pull those green markers out and start marking up the map that comes up next. If your facilitators and scribes can switch you over to that lighter color map. Okay. We're going to get started on our solutions. We're going to take some time with that. Curtis, am I forgetting something? So yeah, the idea is just to, um, you have some visual prompts. Um, here, let me show you. Some things you could do at home, in your neighborhood, in a downtown area, in a commercial area. With those maps in front of you, just start marking them up with what you would like to see where, or maybe what you wouldn't want to see and, and why. So we want to we want to learn that. Uh, we're going we're gonna to wrap up here. I know we're all having probably great conversations about what you'd like to see, but let's take a moment to uh, bring it all back in. And uh, what we're going to do is this, I'm going to go table to table, and if one person um, could just speak up and just share something that they're uh, either very excited about or an idea that like they would really like to see, or maybe um, something that you're most concerned about. But um, maybe it's just, it'd be good to know what people are most excited about so we can know what to you know, focus on. So uh, I'm going to start over here at table three. And uh, oh, we have another mic over here. All right, let's do that. All right, someone from table three, um, Mr. Evans. Yeah, my name is Bobby Evans. I live at 1616 East 156th Street. In, in my situation, I have water coming from Clyde all the way around the nursing home. It's like a ditch, and water comes off the expressway. But behind the house there, there's about five acres of land. If they would build a 
contention pond back there, all that water would drain in there, which would free up the water going into the neighborhood. And I would love to see that happen. It's just vacant land sitting back there doing nothing. We would lose the deer as I watch them every evening, but I could spare them. <laughs> <laughs> They'll probably find a way to stick yeah. around. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, table two. Okay, my name is Charles Howard. Uh, we talked about doing the garden parkways in my neighborhood. I live, well, it's at the beginning of Dalton on 146. And in that area, it's only like two blocks and block down, there's not that many parkways that you can build mm -hmm. the gardens or a park, you said a parkway, right? But uh, more trees, because uh, a lot of dead uh, trees have died in the neighborhood, and when they cut them down, they don't, re they don't replant them. Mm -hmm. And that does take up a lot of the water. So, but, w but we talked about that in doing infrastructure. Mm -hmm. you Thank you. Oh, yeah, go ahead. We also, oh, how you doing? My name is Kevin Griffin. Um, we also talked about what could be done as far as in our basements. Um, I have a real bad problem in mine. I, I get like over two feet of water in my basement. And uh, my concern was I, even though they were talking about the parkway and gardens and, and, and doing little things in the neighborhood, I'm more concerned with fixing that problem in my basement before my mind can focus on anything else as far as the neighborhood. Because I get water every time it rains, and not a little. I get two feet of water every time, and I'm tired of mopping up water and stuff like that, you know. So that that's more my concern. But all the information that we have, Miss Molly, she's great. All the information that she has given us uh, is very, very helpful, you know, and, it, and it's got a lot of solutions in it on, and things that we can do. So I think this is a, a real good program, you know, and um, every time we have a meeting, I'm going to be number one. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And, and that's exactly what we're uh, trying to do. This is a long-term issue, and we're not going to solve flooding overnight, but people are experiencing flood, flooding, like you said, every time it rains. So there are things that we could do to address it in the short, short term, um, but that won't solve the whole problem. So we need to think in the long term as well, and we're trying to do both at the same time. So thank you for your Just one concern. thing, uh, I'm, I'm Ms. Molly. Nice to meet you all. Uh, one of the things She's we, the boss. <laughs> one of the things we did talk about at our table, you know, to address that, right? So we know this is a problem you folks experienced, some of you earlier this week, and we, we really, you know, we're, we, we're sympathetic to that. You know, that makes me feel real real sad and motivated to try to figure out what we can do in the here and now. This is a planning process, right? We're working to think about some big infrastructure projects. That kind of stuff takes time. So there's a patience element to this as well. But in the meantime, what can we be doing? Well, um, there is, I hope you all, this was mentioned earlier, but there'll be a couple of workshops in September. This flyer is available. The fellow over there, Burrell, has a couple flyers in front of him with information about workshops. One is September 7th from 6 to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. at the Blue Island Public Library. One is September 13th at uh, your public library, also 6 to 8. And so that workshop has got two components. The first part is talking about um, solutions to basement flooding. So we've got a guy on our team. He spends his day, days in and out. Uh, looking at people's basements, talking to, talking to f people who flood, trying to figure out what's going on and telling them, okay, you need to regrade your property. You need to seal your foundation. Oh, you, you would really benefit from an overhead sewer. So he's kind of, you know, sometimes you spend money and it doesn't solve the problem. He's the guy to avoid that from happening. So he'll give a little presentation. There'll be time for question and answer. And then the second half, we'll be talking about flood insurance. So most of you know by now, the uh, mayor spoke about it earlier. Not all insurance covers basement backup. Some does. You got to buy a sewer rider. If you experience water from the river, you got drops. So that's something else that we can talk about that day. So we've got we've got two guys. We've got one who's the property assessment guy, and one is the flood insurance guy. And they're coming out to speak with you. There's two opportunities for that, both in September. 
We want you to stay involved with us. We know that the trees and the plants make a difference. We really do. We br live and breathe flooding, and that's the path forward. I'll promise you. We can talk about it till the cows come home. But I know you're suffering now, and that's what we have these workshops for, is to help you think about what can we be doing in the near term. So um, I know we got one more table, but that's my, that, I'm Ms. Molly, and that's my plug. <laughs> Who was it from this table? Hi, I'm Alicia Stokes. One point that was I didn't hear discussed, but it may have came out of the other tables, a point that I really want to make is the fact that I'm asthmatic. When you have sewer problems, when you have water issues, you got to worry about black mold. You got to worry about the, the dangerous mold that can actually kill people. So I am elated that we are having these discussions because we've ex we just moved to the neighborhood after being away 20 years. Then we came back. I know I don't look like I've been back. <laughs> came back home. But one of the concerns, uh, some of the concerns we discuss here, but I wanted to make that a point. So when you're making your pitch for FEMA, you can let them know that we have older crowds here. They are concerned about health issues. We have children in our community, and we're concerned about them becoming sick because of standing water in our basements. Just wanted to throw that pitch out there. Uh, our concerns were, well, we talked about the Lincoln School parking lot flood, Needle Park parking lot flood, uh, the village. Uh, they wanted to know about village code regulations, if they had the native plants how you talked about the rain gardens in the front. You know, we had that code. They might be out there with the measuring tape, you know, having the right people to maintain and keep, keep it. And then sinkholes, sinkhole patches, failures, and city patches. When you have a lot of water, eventually you're going to have sinkhole issues. So that's our main concern, big concern. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for sharing. Thank you, everyone, for coming out tonight. Um, Molly kind of pitched some of our next steps. We have those workshops. Um, what we're doing with these maps, we are going to take this information and put it into uh, a program that we can analyze all this. So this is we are going to use all the information that you submitted tonight and continue to uh, develop this plan. Um, yes. So um, we plan on doing another round of community meetings. And those ex that exact month, is, is it October, are we thinking? Where, yeah. Come here, I'll give you my hand. If you all, another thing to say is just, um, I'm loud, I'm not going to use this. We, uh, if you all are part of block clubs or community groups or churches that get together and talk about these kinds of issues, we also be interested and willing to come out and chat with you if you have a neighborhood group and you guys get together and try to solve these issues, we can come out and chat with you. Um, what are we doing with this information? We're going to get to work on solutions. So we, we sort of, we take this back. Uh, we've got our engineers, we've got our data scientists, and we start workshopping. What are we going to do about it? How are we going to pay for it? Uh, we're applying for grants, trying to bring money into the village, and we're helping, um, helping you all to think about sort of what can you be doing on your property in the meantime. Um, should I bring my pictures about my flooding the next in October? Yeah, or if you have them, um, we take them. We take them, if you have them and you can email them in, that's something we'd take sooner uh, if you have access to, to make that happen. Rebecca's contact information is on the back of that uh, staple document you got when you walked in the door. Rebecca's information is on everything, but she could give it to you again if you want it. So, yeah, my information is on there. We're going to be sending out another postcard telling you about the um, fall slash winter meetings, like she said, right before Thanksgiving. So when you see us, don't throw us out, okay? Um, tell your neighbors, tell your friends. You had a question? Go ahead. I can do with you. 
Yes, we have on in our snapshots, we have five things that you can do to make sure that you um, to try to kind of keep dry. And so I'm sure if you do those things, even though you haven't gotten wet, you'll still be able to keep dry. At our resource table, we also have a whole set of things of where you can make sure water is going so it stays away from your property. Um, my answer is, is if you haven't flooded yet, it might be hard for them to tell you where you might flood. Um, but you, you could, you could try. Actually, I'm kind of glad that you got onto the assessment because Sandra's here from NHS and she has a flyer and she wanted to give you a couple of words about the home resilience program. Um, before she comes up, I'm going to try my best to not touch this mic again. So I'm just going to tell you that I need you to leave my markers here. Uh -huh. And um, you can take the rain ready pens if you so like, but I need you to leave the markers and the red pens on the table, please. And the surveys and my name tags and Mo. Can I just say one, just one thing about oh, here. the, um, here, you're, you're told you're not in a flood area. Curtis touched on it a little bit. Urban flooding is not the same as she, being in a flood plain. She needs to take the mic yeah. for the camera. Yeah. Oh, um, being flooding, Urban flooding is not the same as being in a flood plain. You, you had saw on the maps earlier how it had the red areas along the river. That's the flood plain because when FEMA and all that they do those maps, that's for the overbank flooding from the river, and that's what's considered the flood plain. But the flooding that many of you are experiencing is, is overland from the, the rainwater. So it's, it's looked at differently. Um, so you may not be in a flood zone, although you still experience flooding because it's a different type of flooding. So just because you're not in a flood zone, it's not like we're writing you off and saying, oh, you don't flood because you're not in a flood zone. We're finding out nationally, you know, as a country, like this is a huge problem throughout the country of this urban flooding issues we're having, especially since we've had so many infrastructure projects that were done in the 40s and 50s and now those projects are starting to age significantly. So we're having this problem across the nation of this urban flooding of the infrastructure starting to deteriorate, plus the additional precipitation, plus the growth of, of, of areas and things. So all those four components that Curtis was talking about all culminates into that urban flooding, which has nothing to do with the flood plains. And to your point about what's next, what the thing that's absolutely next is these workshops, which are aimed at residents, two workshops, we have two of the same, one adults and one in Blue Island at their libraries, talking about how you can prepare your home against flooding. And also talking about if you have flood insurance, we've got um, a guy from FEMA coming to talk about flood insurance and how you should not be getting gypped with your insurance. A lot of us don't understand insurance. I know I don't. And so this expert is going to come out and tell you if you're possibly losing money or overpaying on your insurance and what you should be doing in order to make sure that you're properly covered. As the mayor was talking about, he had a backup. His insurance, he thought he had flood insurance and that that was going to save him. But a sewer backup is not covered by flood insurance. So he had to fit that bill. Foot it. Um, so pick up one of these flyers. Bring your friends. That's our next thing that we're going to do. Um, you, I have had people tell me they have pictures and they have videos. Tonight I might try to take your video because it's so large, but if you have pictures, just email them to me and I will put them into a folder and reserve. They might end up on um, a slide as you saw Mr. Evans today. And so um, I thank you for that. If you give me, I just want to know if you give me a picture or a video, it becomes our public use. So if you don't want it to possibly be out there, you might just want to show it to me, not give it to me, okay? Um, and Sandra's going to speak. I'm going to take your question in a minute. And go ahead. Good evening. Uh, not going to take a lot of your time. I want to be respectful of your time. I just want everybody to know that we are in partnership with Rain Ready and Cook County, and NHS is the uh, administrators of the grants that are out now for this community and the others that Rain Ready, Rain Ready is working for. The grants are up to $25,000. So it will, it, there are some restrictions, and I just got this information today. There's some income restrictions. So if you pick up a flyer, it's on the back of the flyer what the income restrictions are. And the eligible repairs includes installation of backwater valves, overhead sewers, ejector pumps, 
and so on. And all of this is not on there, but there is a process for you to get this information. If you go to our website, nhschicago.org, at the bottom left, there's a link that gives you more information about what this grant covers. So if you're having flood like Kevin is right now, it may very well help you, but you need to get on board right away. You're the first community that I've done outreach to. I'm a resident, so I want you to know first. And so that survey is your, your entryway into that program. If you have some individual questions, Sandra's going to hang out for a minute to answer those. And um, I think we are ready to wrap it up. He just told me that you can get a sewer backup rider on your insurance. Your agent might not let you know that, but um, ask about it, okay? Take a tree. Yeah. Trees help water. Thanks, everyone. Your village administrator wants more trees in Dalton, so take a free tree, please.